It's another snowflake coating challenge. This is my third holiday snowflake coating challenge. And in this one, I'm going to once again make an algorithmic snowflake, and I'm going to render in processing the Coke snowflake, otherwise known as the Coke curve, Coke star, Coke island. It's a mathematical curve and one of the earliest fractal curves to have been described. I'm just reading the Wikipedia page by the Swedish mathematician Helge von Koch, and I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, all right, so how does it work? I'm going to just show you over on the whiteboard. So the idea of the Koch snowflake, and this is a recursive pattern that we're going to apply over and over again on a line. And actually, there's something really kind of crazy about this that I do want to talk about, maybe towards the end. The property of this curve is insane. So if I have any line, right, the rule that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and divide it into thirds. Okay, so I take the line and I divide it into thirds. Then the idea is erase the middle section and as if there were an equilateral triangle here, render these two sides of the equilateral triangle. And you get this. The idea being that we've gone from this line to this, which we would then go to, we would do that again to each of these line segments. And again and again and again. And so this is this would be like a Coke line or curve, but if we start with this pattern, and you might want to, after watching this video, make your own version and try starting with different patterns, and there's all sorts of variations on this that you can do, we will end up with something that has a quality like a snowflake. Yay! Okay, so let's get started. And you can see this described right here. And in theory, if we do this correctly, we're going to end up with something that looks like this. All right, so I'm gonna use processing. I will also create a JavaScript with P5JS version of this. Both the code for both of those should be in this video description linked whenever you're watching this. But right now I don't have the code yet because I'm about to, I, don't, I really, this is not one, I, I made an example for this many, many years ago. I'm, I'm sort of figuring it out. So I think what I wanna do is I, want, I think I want a class and I wanna call the class a segment. And I'm definitely going to make heavy use here, I think, of the p-vector object in processing. It's all called p5.vector in p5. It's an object that holds an x and a y value, also a z value, and a lot of mathematical operations that you might typically do with vectors. And you can find some of my other videos about what is a vector if you're so interested. Okay, so uh, in the segment constructor, I'm going to give it um, a start and an end. I think I want to call these A and B. So I'm, it's going to have a P vector A and a P vector B. What's the start? Well, who's to say what's the start and the end of a line? Is this the start and this the end, or is this the start and this the end? So really A and B. And I'm just going to use as the arguments A underscore and B underscore as what gets passed in. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm also going to be very careful and make sure I copy the object um, because uh, I think that might become necessary. So basically, the segment is just this thing. So what I need to do then, if I have a line, segment, I need a function that takes one segment and makes it into four. So I don't know what to call that. Generate, maybe? Let's call this generate. And it's going to be, it's going to generate an array of segments. So this is now a function that returns, in theory, I'm just going to put return null right at the end so it doesn't give me an error. This function should return an array. I'll call those the children segments. I don't know if that makes sense, but, or generated or new, I don't know. Let's just call it segments. Segments, let's call it children, as a new array with four spots in it. Right? So the idea here is that each one, a segment has a starting point and an end point, and then it should generate um, four sub ones. So let's, 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 let's go to the main program for a second, and what are we doing? I guess I could make a snow, snowflake class, but ultimately what I want is an array list of segments. Uh, segments, segments equals a new array list full of segments. And then uh, I'm going to say background uh, zero, 
stroke 255, and I'm just going to rent draw them all. So for every segment S in segments, say S dot show, and this is the really easy part, because if I have a function called show, oops, ah, to show a segment is just to draw a line from a dot x, a dot y, to b dot x, b dot y. Okay? So this is the idea. A segment is two endpoints of a line. It can draw that line, and it's somehow I'm going to have to generate the sublines, which I haven't figured out yet. So now, if we do this, oh, well, let's add a segment. So I can call this, like, I can say segments push, um, and I'm going to say, um, no, not push. Push is the name for adding something to an array in JavaScript. <laughs> I'm getting very confused. Add. Uh, so let's uh, let's let's call a, let's make two p vectors. Just I'm gonna make them somewhat arbitrary. So I'm gonna say like um, zero comma three hundred, and p vector b is a new p vector that's at uh, three hundred comma or no six hundred comma three hundred. So if I create a new segment between a and b, then I should see it. There we go. So there's my segment. So now what I should do is I need to somehow, let's just, let's actually put this in a, um, let's put this in a variable called start because I'm curious, what I want to do is, I want to just test out my algorithm. So I'm going to say segment uh, children equals start.generate. So I just want to test out my algorithm once. So I make that starting segment, I add it to the array list, and now I just want to generate the four child. I, and it's a little bit silly to call them children, but it's kind of like a parent-child relationship in the sense that the segment gives birth to four new segments. So, um, okay. So now I can start doing this work. So I really just need to figure out the math for like, if I label these, right? If I label these like A, B, C, and D. Let's do A and D first. That must be the easiest, right? So let's do uh, segment A. So one thing I could do is I could represent this line segment as, as a vector. So as a vector that points from here, from A to B. Because if I do that, I could divide the magnitude of that vector by three and then move that distance from A and move that distance from B. And now I have, I should, probably should have used, I should label these like one, sorry, two, I probably should have counted from zero, three, and four, right? And this is A, and this is B, starting out, right? So if I can get that vector, shrink it, and then move from here, that gives me a new segment between this A and this new point, and I can also take, get this point to the end. So that's going to be easy. So let me, first what I want to do is I want to make a vector, which is the difference between B and A. Then what I want to do is divide that vector by three. So I want to just shrink that I could divide it by three. And then for segment one, I need a new point, uh, and the, a new point like so, uh, B1, I'll just call it. I, the naming here, I've really got to think about that. And obviously, I will um, but, is adding to A that B. And then children 0 is a new segment that goes between A and B1. Right? So I've got, the, and I'm, I, again, I, this is really weird what I'm doing here, but I'm calling this point now B1. Okay, and maybe this point is now going to be uh, A1 because <laughs> I'm going to use it to get to, to make a line segment of this thing. I, by the way, you might not realize that watching this, but I've been live streaming for well over three hours and things aren't making as much sense to me as they <laughs> might typically look. So now let me do segment number four, which is really taking B and subtracting V, right? Subtract V from B. B minus V, I think that's right, and we'll call this A1, and so, and this should really be segment zero and segment three, because I'm putting it in this array, so let's renumber those. So now I want to make a segment between A1 and B. 
So again, this is 0, 1, 2, and 3. And I've called this B1, called this A1. Let's just call this C. Let's call this C. Okay, so now all I need to do is figure out that point, and then I'm done. That shouldn't be too hard, right? So how do I figure out C? So P C is actually, I got, ah, I got an idea. <laughs> we could rotate, right? What is this? An equilateral triangle, this angle is 60 degrees, or pi over, pi is 180, so that's like one third, pi divided by three, is that right? That's 60 degrees, oh boy, sorry. Yes, okay, so this is, this is um, 60 degrees. So if I can take this vector, which is doing this, rotate it 60 degrees, add it to B1, I'll have C. So I should be able to say V rotate um, pi divided by three. And I might have to do negative because the whole coordinate system is flipped in a computer graphics. And then I'm gonna say P vector C equals P vector add, uh, what did I call that? B1, B1 plus V. So now segment two is, uh, Children 2 is a new segment that goes between B1 and C, and then I need one that goes between C and A1. That goes between B1, B1 and C, and segment 3 goes between C and A1. And again, I might want to rethink the naming here, and maybe some of you will have good suggestions for that. And then I can say return children. Okay. So first, let's just see if this doesn't give me any errors. <laughs> let's just see if like, I run this, and I'm going to just say like print line children. It's not going to show me anything here, because it doesn't. But okay, so that's good. I didn't get any errors, and I'm getting this sort of console log. So this is a nice place of using JavaScript. Ooh. Um, why did I get null there? So one of them was null. I gotta check that. But um, this is the nice thing about using JavaScript, JavaScript is if I console log that array, I'd be able to actually look at the object and see what all the properties are. It's a little trickier to do that in Java. But why was one of them null? Children zero, children three. Oh, whoops, it, this, is, this is one. Sorry, this should be one. Okay, so now if I do that again, we can see there's four segments that got saved. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I'm not gonna add the start, just to see, I'm gonna say segments dot add, I think add all allows me to add an array to an array list. It's giving me an error here though. All right, so I looked around on the Javadocs page for a little while, I didn't see anything that would really work for me. I'm sure somebody in the comments will give me a good suggestion, but I'm actually just going to write my own function. I'm gonna say uh, add all, I'm gonna get an array, and I'm gonna add it to, you know what, I'm gonna add it to an array list of segments. I wonder if I typed the array somehow. Oh no, I did type the array. Um, and then I'm just gonna do a for loop. For uh, every segment s in array, list, list.add s. So this is my own function to add everything from an array into an array list. So I will now call add all, all the children to the segments. And now, let's see. Oh, yay, that worked. It's upside down. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. So that's an easy fix. I can just rotate by negative pi over three. And there we go. This is the building block. Now I just need to do this generation after generation after generation. So let's think about how I wanna do this now. So let's say what I wanna do is, let me click the mouse and get a new generation each time. So I'm gonna do this. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a mouse pressed function. And what I'm going to do in mouse pressed is I'm going to make a blank array list. I'm going to make a new one. New I'm going to call it next generation is a new array list of segments. Okay. So I'm making oops I'm making a new array list of segments. Oh no, this is fine. And what I'm going to do is for all the current segments in the array, I am going to, I guess I could have made, I should have just, I should just make this, this would be so much easier if I just made this return. So, anyway, so this I could refactor, have this return an array list. 
This was silly to make this an array because then I, those could get added together. Should I do that? Eh, it's fine, I already have it. But that's something you could do to improve this code if you want. Segment uh, children equals s dot, what did I call it, generate. Then I want to say uh, add all the children to the next generation. And then I want to say segments equals next generation, right? So basically, oh, that's not a function, right? I need to make a new array because the old segments don't get kept. They, each one just makes a bunch of new ones and gets added. So what this should do now, click, 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 click. There we go. Look at that. There's that Coke curve, all right? Um, and uh, some people in the chat are giving me some good suggestions. All right, so we need to turn this into a snowflake, but first, I wanna to talk to you about something crazy. Can you please, please humor me for a second. This is called the monster curve for a reason. And why, why? This is one of the things, this is one of those mathematics things that really excites me. And let's see if I can explain this. Let's say this line segment has a length of one. Think about for a second, what is the length now of this, this is a cur the, the Coke curve, it has length one. At generation zero, it has length one. At generation one, what is its length? Well, if this is one third, each one of these is length one third, so its length is four thirds. Now what is its length? Oh my God, this is gonna be so hard to figure out. But if this was one third, then this is one ninth, so this is four ninths times three, the length would be 12 ninths. Is that right? No, no, that couldn't possibly be right. Right, this is one, this is one third, this is one ninth, and then we have, no, 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 16 ninths, right? So right, that was right there, this is, this part is four ninths, but there are now three things that are all four ninths. Four things are all four ninths. So we get 16 ninths. This number, actually, if we, if we keep doing this over and over again, and we could probably create an equation to do this pretty easily, somebody else on a, some other YouTube channel will do that, this goes to infinity. I'm not gonna prove that to you right now, I'm gonna let you try to figure that out on your own. What's the weird, what's crazy about that? So how much, as, as you do this over and over again, how much paint, if you could draw the Coke curve to, um, to the infinite generation, it would fit. It would fit here. It's never gonna not fit here. But how much ink would I need? I would need an infinite amount of ink. So that's a kind of mathematical paradox. How could we have a curve that's infinitely long fit into a finite space? Think about that. Now, we don't have to worry about that. That problem is irrelevant for us because we have pixel limitations, right? I mean, at a certain point, I can keep clicking, but I'm not gonna get any more resolution out of this because I have a limited number of pixels. But that's an interesting, and so one thing we, you could do, on, and it's also gonna get really, really slow. One thing you could do is you could think about, this is, could be a challenge for you after you watch this, is could you make an infinitely zoomable ones? This is, by the way, four divided by three to the zero power, generation zero. This is four divided by three to the one power, four divided by three, and this is four divided by three squared, 16.99. You can now imagine what the next generation would be. Four divided by three cubed. So this is actually the equation for, uh, for, for expanding out the, the Coke curve. Um, okay, so now what do I wanna do? Ah, this is what I wanna do is make a triangle. So I'm gonna make uh, a triangle. So let's think about this. This shouldn't be too hard. Uh, the first segment uh, would be, so let's do A is gonna be at like zero comma 100. B is gonna be at width comma like 100, yeah. And uh, then all I need is C. This should be an equilateral triangle though probably, right? Well, let's just do this first. Um, let's do this at like uh, 300 comma 600. Uh, segment one, segment two, segment three, A to B, B to C, 
and C to A. <laughs> and I want to add segment one, segment two, segment three. Huh, did I like get that right? <laughs> There we go. There it is. The Korg snowflake. I should give myself some more space. Oh, no. <laughs> translate a little. I don't know, obsessively. My, I'm so brain dead right now. I'm going to translate down uh, by 100. There we go. There we go. I'm sure somebody could come up with a nicer way. So there's so many possibilities here. I actually all oh, have these. These are all individual objects in a big array. So you know what? I could actually move them all around. I could have them all fall and I could animate them back into place. There's so many possibilities there. Um, I could color them. Um, there's a lot of variations on how I'm going to go to uh, uh, here and I'm, I'm going to show you. There's actually an interesting post here um, which links to this page which shows a bunch of ways you can, variations on how you can draw this. So this is something you could attempt after watching this video. So think about color, think about animation, think about making many of them. But this is the Kog, 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 Snowflake in processing. And uh, oh, so when you make a variation of this, uh, check the video description, go to the link to thecodingray.com. There's some instructions for how you can submit your variation on them. And after the new year, on, the, on a live stream, I will share a whole bunch of all these different kinds of snowflakes that people have made, okay? Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And yet, there is more, another an addendum here, which is that if you have an equilateral triangle, if the length, the height of an equilateral triangle is the square root of three divided by two times the length of the base. So actually, I very quickly added that to the code. Thank you to Simon, who reminded me of this fact. And you can see here, I am now setting the last point C as the length of the base, to, uh, which I know, by the way, is 600. So I could have just said 600 here. <laughs> but I'm getting that distance just to be sure. The length of the base times the square root of 3 divided by 2. And that's where I'm setting that point C. So now here is finally the Koch curve with, um, with an actual equilateral triangle.